if I'm out and about, either in a, a professional or a social setting, people say, you know, Rich, what do you do? And I tell them, and they're almost always their mouth opens up, and like you, you're an auctioneer, you're one of those guys. And the next question always is, are you one of those guys that talks fast? Everybody's question is, how did the colonel? Uh, get associated with auctioneering. That goes back to Civil War days when the colonels actually conducted the auctions of uh, items and merchandise that they picked up as they're going through uh, the countryside. Uh, auctioneering actually dates back to 500 BC when uh, the Babylonians used to sell their women for, uh, for wives. So there's quite a bit of history to auctioneering. The colonel seems to be the biggest one that everyone has questions as soon as they walk into the classroom. I think this is, this is a great area for auction. Uh, this part of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, the mid-Atlantic states, the auctions are very popular. There's states that have no licensing requirements, so I don't know how they count their auctioneers, but um, I think we're a concentrated area here that, that likes auctions. Um, Lancaster County is probably one of the highest density as far as um, auctions in the country, aside from the Midwest. In Pennsylvania, you need to go through an accredited school to get your uh, your licensing uh, training and then take a test. Uh, or you can go through a two-year apprentice program and also take the licensing test. The auctioneering program at Reading Area Community College is broken down into, I believe it's about six major segments. And the pieces that I teach there are primarily communication skills and marketing. We do ethics and we do law, product knowledge. We have people coming in that have product knowledge on jewelry, antiques, furniture. And public speaking too. Everyone had to, initially, this one of the first things that we do in the class is everyone has to get up and do a speech. We start with the breathing exercises and we teach them the numbers and the drills for the numbers. What we want them to do is just call numbers. Then you start build, building in filler words to help you you know, build up that gap in time and keep people's attention and, and move the auction along. And you kind of you know, build on that. Then to where you're bidding to your classmates. You know, you're selling everything from your watch on your hand to your ceiling tiles to the cup of coffee on the table. Whatever's in that classroom we sold ten times over. Uh, we even started at the end selling the instructors and some we got some good money for, some we didn't. The variety of students that have come through the program that, well one, that I sat in class with and two, that I've taught, it's amazing, the backgrounds. Um, we've had I'm just trying to think of the one class. I mean, we've had a fine art dealer sitting next to a farmer. We had uh, two gentlemen uh, from an Amish background who grew up with this. They, they, that was you know, a huge part of their lifestyle. So they had a lot of auction background, very good bid callers. Um, it's just something they did while we were doing whatever else growing up at that time. In all the classes, we've ranged in age from 20 to 60. Um, and some of them are second careers or additions too. you know like we had a realtor who in addition to that wanted to obtain his auctioneer's license. Some of them have been in business, some of them have been in industry and some of them are out of work at this point and uh, they have gotten grants to uh, get further training. The last three years of the RAC program it's been steady, this pretty much the same enrollment, 10 to 15 students each semester but I will say a number of them this semester were able to come to class because they didn't have a full-time job. So they had been laid off or they decided it was a transition time for them. Uh, you know, this business, like any other business starting it up, especially one without a huge background to draw on, or someone in my immediate family or, or certain inner circle with any experience in this, it was a huge risk for me. You know, I left the, the corporate world, the corporate sales world, world, you know, we're making, you know, pretty good money uh, in this day and age. Um, and then pushing that all aside the and say, you know, I'm going for this. I think most auctioneers that get started, there's a family connection or, or someone who has grown up in the business. I've noticed a lot of the students coming through that they grew up in the business as a buyer or the, the kids of a buyer. You know, like, oh, my dad used to go to auctions all the time and he bought whatever it was. He bought stamps. And then they've started attending auctions and kind of get, you know, what I call the bug. You get, you get attached to it. You get bit by it and uh, become addicted to to auctions. Yeah, you know, from going to auctions, I saw what the auctioneer did. I saw, you know, the excitement that, that built in the crowd at a good auction and and how people enjoyed watching the auctioneer. You know, it's kind of a, of a performance. And, you know, that interested me and it, and it, and it certainly interested me in, on, you know, this stuff is all brought in, all set up and sold out. 
uh, that day, and uh, people always left happy seeing me, and, and what a better job to be in than to, to set stuff up, be around stuff. It's just fun to be around the stuff. 99% of the people I meet are just are great people, and uh, get them in, let them get items at a fair price that you know they really set, and out the door they go with a smile, and we see them again in a couple weeks.